Okay, in the last video, I went over an explanation of Faraday's Law. You can link to that video in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But in this video, I'm going to go over just some simple example problems using Faraday's Law. Okay, so here we go. We have, I have four problems we're going to do here. I have a circular loop of wire. It has a diameter of 12 centimeters. It's in a magnetic field. It has a magnetic field strength of 1.2 teslas. The loop is removed from the magnetic field over a time of... 0.25 seconds, and we want to know what is the induced EMF. So let's just think about this for just one second before we go on and calculate the induced EMF. The magnetic field, the, the loop is in the magnetic field. That means it has some flux. There is some magnetic field through the loop, and then we take it out, and that means the magnetic flux at the end, after we take it out, is going to be zero. So we want to use this equation. This is the equation we use to calculate the induced EMF, the induced voltage. And um, this is the number of windings. It doesn't say anything about a number of windings, so assume that's one. We know the time, but we have to calculate the change in the magnetic flux. That's what I was just mentioning. So this is the magnetic flux, and this is the equation we use to calculate the change in the magnetic or the magnetic flux. It's the area of the coil times the magnetic field strength times the cosine of theta. Theta is the angle between the line that's perpendicular to the face of the coil and the magnetic field. It doesn't say there's an angle, so we're just going to assume that the coil is kind of perpendicular, so that line would be parallel to the magnetic field. And therefore, that angle is zero, and the cosine of zero is one. So we, that just reduces to the area times the magnetic field. It says it's a circular loop. The area of a circle is pi r squared. It says that the radius, excuse me, the diameter is 12 centimeters. That means the radius is 6 centimeters, and that means in meters that the radius is 0 0.06 meters. Always convert from centimeters to meters. Pi times the radius squared times the magnetic field strength gives us that the magnetic flux before we take the coil out is 2.0 times 10 to the minus 2. That's the initial flux because we want to know the change. The final, now we take the coil out, so then there's no more magnetic field in the coil, so then the final is just 0. All right, so you have this equation. Again, this is the same equation. I just took the n out because this is going to be 1. Don't forget the minus sign. And we're going to take the change in the magnetic flux. 0, that's the final minus the initial. The change is always the final. When we take it out, the initial is where it started. And then we're going to divide that by the time. And then this is a minus sign. And this is going to be a negative value because it's 0 minus some value. And that means that the induced voltage is 8, a positive 8.0 times 10 to the minus 2. You've got to kind of keep your minus sign straight here. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one looks like this. We have a rectangle, rectangular coil. So it's a rectangle, not a circle. It has 100 windings. Its dimensions are 20 centimeters by 12. It's in a magnetic field. And it says here that it's originally held, initially held, so that the plane of the coil is parallel to the magnetic field, 1.2 Tesla magnetic field, 1.2, 1.5 Tesla magnetic field. The loop is then rotated in 0 0.20 seconds so that the coil is then perpendicular to the magnetic field. We want to know what's the induced EMF. Okay, this one I think is kind of good maybe to take a little picture here or draw a picture. Um, so this is the situation. It starts like this because it says that it's initially held so that the coil is parallel to the magnetic field. Okay, and then it's rotated so that it is perpendicular to the magnetic field. And this is our equation, and we know 100 windings, 0.2 seconds, but we have to calculate the change in the flux. Now, in this case, I'm going to go through this in a little bit of detail so you see how this works when we rotate the coil. We have the initial flux, and then the final flux we're going to calculate. The change is always the final minus the initial. Now, the initial flux looks like this. The area of the rectangular coil is 0 0.2 meters times 0 0.12 meters. Remember to uh, convert centimeters to meters. And then we're going to multiply that times the magnetic field strength. And then we're going to multiply by the cosine of theta. Theta is the angle between the magnetic field and a line that is perpendicular to the face of the coil. So this line is perpendicular to the face of the coil. This is the coil we're looking at kind of on the end of the coil, rotating it around this axis. This angle is therefore 90 degrees. And the cosine of 90 is zero. OK, 
Okay, so it doesn't matter if there's an area and a magnetic field, there's no flux. That just basically tells us that there's no magnetic field going through the coil. If there's no magnetic field actually going through the coil, because the plane of the coil and the magnetic field are parallel to each other, then the zero Weber's. The magnetic flux, the initial magnetic flux is zero. Now we're going to rotate the coil and we're going to have the same basic situation. We have the same area. We have the same magnetic field stream, but now the angle between the magnetic field and the line that is perpendicular to the face of the coil, that is zero degrees and the cosine of zero is one. So now we're at a maximum. So we go from zero to a maximum. All right, now we just use our equation to calculate the induced voltage. And we're going to put 100 because 100 coils. Once again, don't forget the minus sign. Now the change is just the final minus the initial. So it's final is this minus zero. It's just going to be 0 0.36, 0 0.036 Weber's divided by the time point two, and you get that the induced voltage when we rotate that coil about this axis is going to be 18 volts. All right. That's number two. Now, number three is a little bit interesting because we have this graph here. We have a magnetic field through a single loop of wire, um, it, which is, has a radius of 10 centimeters and a resistance of 7.5 ohms, changes with time as shown in this diagram right here. Okay, so you can see the magnetic field starts at zero, then it increases over two seconds to 0.5 teslas, then it's constant for two seconds, and then it decreases for two, four seconds, over four seconds, back to zero. And we want to know what's the induced EMF as a function of time. Now we have three different sections here. Now you shouldn't remember for Faraday's law, it says that a voltage will be induced when the magnetic flux changes over time. Well here, the magnetic field, so therefore the magnetic flux is changing over time. Here it's not changing, so that means there's going to be no induced voltage during this section, and then it's going to be uh, and induce voltage again over this section. All right, now we're going to go through, we're going to calculate, first of all, the change in the magnetic flux for this first section. We're going to do this first section, and we have an area, we have a magnetic field, and we have um, the cosine is going to be uh, zero again, so we're just going to drop that, or it's just one. Now it's a circular loop of wire, which has a radius of 10 centimeters, and we have the magnetic field strength. The radius is pi r squared, convert to meters again, square it, and the magnetic field at the very end, at two seconds, is 0 0.5 teslas. So we get that the final magnetic field strength, excuse me, the final flux is 1.6 times 10 to the minus two teslas. Now that's the final, because that's when it's at its maximum. When it's here, when it starts, okay, the magnetic field is zero, so we just have zero here, and that means the final flux, excuse me, that means the initial flux is zero. So when we calculate the induced voltage, we have that it goes from zero to 1.6 times 10 to the minus two. It's the final minus the initial, and that is just 1.6 times 10 to the minus two Weber's. Okay, divide by the time, the time is two seconds. That change occurs over two seconds. And that means that the induced voltage in that case is minus 8.0 times 10 to the minus 3 volts. That's during this initial two seconds. Now, I mentioned earlier, here, the magnetic field strength isn't changing. If the magnetic field strength isn't changing, then the magnetic flux won't change because the flux is dependent upon the magnetic field. If there's no change in the flux, if there's no change in the field, then there's no voltage. So during this time, there is a field, there is a flux, but it's not changing. So from two to four seconds, the induced voltage is zero, zero volts here. Now we're going to decrease back to zero, going from the flux of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2 Weber's back to zero over four seconds. So basically, all I got to do is change this to to four, so I'm going to cross that out, and I'm going to make that four seconds, and then I get that the induced voltage is four, okay, times ten to the minus three volts. Now you'll notice here this is minus because we have a minus sign here. For this last part, it's the final minus the initial, and that's going to mean that this value is also going to be negative. And a negative times a negative is a positive.
Okay? So you got to be aware of those negative signs and how that works also. But the first one is positive 8, and the second one, excuse me, is negative 8, and the second one is positive 4 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay? So induced voltage, no voltage, induced voltage. And you can see this occurs over twice the time. So the induced voltage is half. Okay, the magnitude of the voltage is half. It takes twice as long to occur. Okay, last one here. Now, this says we have a coil of wire, and the coil of wire has five loops. And in the coil, this is the coil here, this red um, rect square here. The coil is 20 centimeters on a side. And there's a magnetic field. These dots are the magnetic field coming out of the page. Okay? And the magnetic field strength is 0.6 teslas is the initial. It's passing through the coil, and the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field. And then the field increases from 0.6 teslas to 1.8 teslas over this period of time. We want to know what's the induced voltage. Okay, once again, here's the equation. It says five loops, so this is going to be five. We know the time, and we have to calculate the change. Now, in this case, we have an initial magnetic field, and we have a final magnetic field. The coil, the area is not changing. Okay, and one of them isn't zero, so we're going to calculate that the initial flux from the initial magnetic field is um, 0.2 meters squared, because it's 20 centimeters. The magnetic field starts at 0.6 teslas, and that means that the initial flux is 0 0.24, 0 0.024 Webers. Now, it's going to change because it's going to increase. We have the same area with the same coil. This red square is the coil of wire. We square that, and now we multiply it by 1.8 because the magnetic field strength has increased to 1.8 teslas, and therefore we get that the Weber's the magnetic field, no, the magnetic flux is 0.072 Weber's. Okay, now we can plug those values into the equation. So we have five because it's five loops. The change in the flux is the final, this is what it was at the end, minus the initial, that is 0 0.048, and that change occurs over 0 0.75 seconds. And if we multiply those and divide by 0 0.75, we get that that is minus 0 0.32 volts. That will be the induced voltage in that red coil of wire when we have this change over this much time. Now, it doesn't say to do this here, but I'm just going to do We want to figure out now what's the what direction would that um, induced voltage, we have an induced voltage, and what would be the direction of the induced current that would result from that induced voltage. So now we're going to use our right hand rule. This is our right hand. Okay, this is my right hand. And um, we're going to be increasing the magnetic field. We're going to be increasing the magnetic field out of the coil. The coil doesn't like that, so we're going to be trying to push that I kind of think of it like pushing that magnetic field back in with my fingers, my fingertips, with the magnetic field going into the coil, okay, and in the opposite direction. And therefore, my thumb is pointing to, the, to my left. This is to my left, and that means that the current is going to be generated, is going to be traveling in the clockwise direction. So this is the direction of the current that would be moving through that coil of wire as a result of that induced voltage. And the, that is what we did um, for Lenz's Law. And we'll make a video next uh, on how we determine that and talk a little bit more about the cases for uh, Lenz's Law and the direction of the induced current. Okay, so there, there you go. I went through four different examples. I hope that kind of covers some of the basic stuff that you should know for how to do those simple problems for Faraday's Law. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.